hush, never tell me. I take it much unkindly that thou, Iago, who hast had my purse as though the strings were thine, shouldst know of this. Soons, but you'll not hear me. If ever I did dream of such a matter, abhor me. Thou toldst me thou didst hold him in thy hate. Despise me if I do not. Three great ones of the city in personal suit to make me his lieutenant, off cap to him. By the faith of man, I know my price. I am worth no worse a place. But he, in loving his own pride and purposes, evades them with a bombast circumstance, horribly stuffed with epithets of war. None suits my mediators, for certes, says he, I have already chose my officer. <laughs> and what was he? Forsooth a great arithmetician, Juan Michael Cassio of Florentine, who never set a squadron in the field or the division of a battle knows more than a spinster. Mere prattle without practice is all his soldiership, Yet he, sir, hath the election. And I, of whom his eyes had seen the proof at Rhodes, at Cyprus, and on other grounds, Christian and heathen, must be believed and calmed by debitor and creditor. This countercaster, he in good time must his lieutenant be. And I, God bless the mark, his moorship's ensign. <laughs> by heaven, I rather would have been his hangman. Well, there's no remedy. It is the curse of service. Preferment goes by letter and affection, not by the old gradation where each second stood heir to the first. Now, sir, be judge yourself. Whether I, in any just term, am a find to love her the more. I would not follow him then. Oh, sir. I content you. I follow him to serve my turn upon him. We cannot all be masters, nor all masters cannot be truly followed. You shall mark many a knee-crooking knave, who, doting on his own obsequious bondage, wears out his time much like his master's ass for naught but provender. And when he's old, <coughs> cashiered. Whip me such honest knaves. Others there are, who, trimmed in formed and visages of duty, keep yet their hearts attending on themselves. And when they have lined their coats, do themselves homage. Now, these fellows have some soul, and such a one do I profess myself for sir. It is as sure as you are Rodrigo. Were I the more, I would not be Iago. I am not what I am. What a full fortune does the thick lips owe if he can carry it thus. Call up her father. Rouse him. Poison his delight, proclaim him in the streets, incense her kinsman, and though he in a fertile climate dwell, plague him with flies. Well, here's her father's house. I'll call aloud. Do, with like timorous accent and dire yell, as when by night and negligence the fire is spied in populous cities. Brabantio! Signor Brabantio! Away! What, oh, Brabantio? Thieves, thieves, look to your house, your daughter and your bags! Thieves, what thieves! Oh, Signor Brabantio! Ah. Oh. What is the reason for this terrible summons? Uh, Signor, is all your family within? Are your doors locked? Why? Wherefore I ask you this? Soon, sir, you are robbed. Oh, for shame, put on your gown. <laughs> your heart is burst, you have lost half your soul. Even now, now, very now, an old black ram is tapping your white. You! Arise, arise, I say! Awake the snorting citizens with a bell, or the devil will make a grandsire of you. Arise, I say! What? Have you lost your wits? Most grave Brabantio, do you know my voice? Not I, what art thou? My name is Rodrigo. Thou wert so welcome. I have charged thee not to haunt about my doors. Sir. In honest plainness thou hast heard me say, my daughter is not for thee. Sir. And now, in madness, being full of supper and distempering drafts, thou comest upon malicious knavery to start my quiet. Sir. But thou must needs know I have it within my spirit and place to make this bitter to thee. Patience, good sir. What tellest thou me of robbing? This is Venice. My house is not a grange. Most grave Brabantio in simple and pure soul, I come to you. You are one of those that would not serve God if the devil bid you. Because we come to do you service, and you think we are ruffians, you'll have your daughter covered by a Barbary horse. You'll have your nephews nay to you. You'll have courses for cousins and genets for Germans. What profane wretch art thou? I am one, sir, that comes to tell you your daughter and the more are making the beast with two backs. Thou art a villain. You are a senator. This thou shalt answer. 
I know thee, Roderigo. I will answer anything. But if it be your patience and most wise respect that your fair daughter, at this odd, even, and dull watch of the night, be transported with no better nor worse a guard, but with a knave of common hire, a gondolier to the gross clasps of a lascivious moor. If this be known to you and your allowance, we then have done you bold and saucy wrongs. But if you know not this, my manners tell me we have your wrong rebuke. Your daughter, if you have not given her leave, I say again, hath made a gross revolt, tying her duty, beauty, wit, and fortunes to an extravagant and wheeling stranger of here and everywhere. Straight, satisfy yourself. If she be in your house or her chamber, let loose upon me the justice of the state for thus deluding you. Strike the tinder hole, give me a taper. This accident is not unlike my dream. Belief of it oppresses me already. Light, I say light! Farewell, for I must leave you. It seems not meet nor wholesome to my place to be produced as if I stay I shall against the moor. I do hate him as I do hell pains. Yet for necessity of present life, I must show out a flag and sign of love, which is indeed but sign, that you shall surely find him Lead to the sagittary, the raised search, and there will I be uh, with him. So farewell. Gone she is. It is too true an evil. And what's to come of my despised time is naught but bitterness. Now, Roderigo, where didst thou see her? Oh, unhappy girl, with the moor seest thou. Oh, who would be a father? What said she to you? How didst thou know it was she? Oh, she deceives me past thought. Raise all my kindred, get more tapers. Are they married, think you? Oh, truly, I think they are. Heavens! How got she out? Oh, treason of the blood. Fathers from hence, trust not your daughter's minds by what you see them act. Is there not charms? by which the property of youth and maidhood may be abused. Have you not read, Roderigo, of some such thing? Yes, sir, I have indeed. Call up my brother. Oh, would you had had her. Some one way, some another. Do you know where we may apprehend her in the moor? I think I can discover him if you will please to get good guard and go along with me. Pray you, lead on, Roderigo. At every house I'll stop. I may command at most. Get weapons ho. Call up some special officer of might. Pray you, lead on. I'll deserve your pains, Roderigo. Though in the trade of war I have slain men, yet do I hold it the very stuff of the conscience to do no contrived murder. I lack iniquity sometimes to do me service. Nine or ten times I thought to have yerked him here under the ribs. It's better as it is. Hey, but he prated and spoke such scurvy and provoking terms against your honour. With what little godliness I have, I did full hard for bear him. I pray you, sir, are you fast married? <laughs> Be you assured of this. The Magnifico is well beloved, and hath in his effect a voice potential as double as the Duke's. He will divorce you, or put upon you what restraint or grievance the law with all his might to enforce it on will give him cable. Let him do his spite. My services, which I've done the Signore, shall out-tongue his complaints. It is yet to know which, when I know that boasting is an honor, I shall promulgate. I fetch my life and being from men of royal siege, and my demerits may speak unbonneted to as proud a fortune as this that I have reached. For no, Iago, but that I love the gentle Desdemona. I would not my unhoused free condition put into circumscription and confined for the sea's worth. But look what lights come yon. This is the raised father and his friend. You had best go in. Not I. I must be found. My parts, my title, and my perfect soul shall manifest me rightly. Is it there? By Janus, I think no. The servants of the Duke and my lieutenant. The goodness of the night upon your friends. What is the news? The Duke does greet you, General, and he requires your haste post-haste appearance even on the instant. What is the matter, think you? 
Something from Cyprus, as I may divine. It is a business of some heat. The galleys have sent a dozen sequent messengers this very night at one another's heels, and many of the councils raised and met her at the Duke's already. You have been hotly called for, and being not at your lodging to be found, the Senate hath sent about three several quests to search you out. It's well, I'm found by you. I will but spend a word here in the house and go with you. Ensign, what makes he here? Faith, he tonight hath boarded a land, Carrack. If it prove lawful prize, he's made forever. I do not understand. He's married. To who? Married to... Come, Captain, will you go? I'm with you. Here comes another troop to seek for you. It is Brabantio. General, be advised he comes to bad intent. Hold on. Stand there. Senor, it is the war. Down with him. Thief. You, Rodrigo, come, sir. I am for you. Keep up, your bright swords. Oh, the duel, Rustin. Senor, you shall more command with yours than with your weapons. Where hast thou stowed my daughter? Damned as thou art, thou hast enchanted her. For I refer me to all things of sense. Whether she in chains of magic were not bound, if a maid so tender, fair, and happy, so opposite to marriage, that she did shun the wealthy, curled darlings of our nation, would ever have, to incur a general mock, run from her guardage to the sooty bosom of such a thing as thou, to fear, not to delight, that thou hast practiced on her with foul charms, tis probable and palpable the thinking. Therefore I do apprehend thee, and attach thee as an abuser of the world, a practiser of arts inhibited, and out of warrant. Lay hold on him, if he do resist, subdue him at his peril. Hold your hands! Both you of mine planning and the rest. Were it my cue to fight, I should have known it without a prompter. Whither would you that I go to answer this your charge? To prison, to fit time and direct session, call thee to answer. What if I do obey? How may the Duke be there with satisfied, whose messengers are here about my side, upon some present business of the state to bring me to him? Now, the Duke in council, and this, this time of night? Mm. True, most worthy senor. The Duke's in council, and your noble self, I'm sure, is sent for. Bring him away. Mine's not an idle cause. The Duke himself, or any of my brothers of the state, cannot but feel this wrong as twere their own. Or if such actions may have passage free, bond slaves and pagan shall our state be. There is no composition in these news that gives them credit. Indeed, they are disproportioned. My letters say 107 galleys. And mine 140. And mine 200. But though they jumped out on a just account, in these cases where that with aim reports, it is off with difference. Yet do they all confirm a Turkish fleet and bearing up to Cyprus. Nay, it is possible enough to judgment. I do not so secure me in the error, but the main article I do approve in fearful sense. What ho, what ho? Gashano, message from the galleys. Now what's the business? The Turkish preparation makes for Rome. Rome. So was I bid report here to the state by Senior Angelo. I'll say you by this charge. This cannot be by no essay of reason. It is a pageant to keep us in false keys. When we consider the importance of Cyprus to the Turk, and let ourselves again but understand that as it more concerns the Turk in roads. Mm. We must not think the Turk is so unskillful to leave that latest which concerns him first. Neglecting an attempt of ease and gain to wake and wage a danger profitless. Nay, in all confidence, he's not for road. Here's more news. The Ottomites, reverend and gracious, steering with due course toward the Isle of Rhodes, have there and jointed them with an afterfleet. Aye, so I thought. How many, as you guess? A thirty sail, and now they do restem their backward course, bearing with frank appearance their purposes toward Cyprus. Cyprus! Your Montano, your trusty and most valiant servitor, with his free duty, recommends you thus and prays you to be leaving. Aren't he certain then for Cyprus? Marcus Lusicus, is not he in town? He's uh, now in Florence. Write from us to him. Post, post haste dispatch. Here comes the valiant Moor. Valiant Othello. We must straight employ you against the general enemy, Ottoman. <coughs> I did not see you. Welcome, gentle senor. 
We lacked your counsel and your help tonight. I so did I you. yours. Good your grace, pardon me. Neither my place nor aught I heard of business hath raised me from my bed, nor doth a general care take hold of me. For my particular grief is of so floodgate and o'erbearing nature that it gluts and swallows other sorrows, and it is still itself. Hey, what's the matter? My daughter, oh, my daughter. Head? Lie to me. She is abused, stolen from me, corrupted by spells and medicines bought of mountebanks. For nature so preposterously to err, being not deficient, blind, or lame of sense, sans witchcraft could not. Whoe'er he be, that in this foul proceeding, hath thus beguiled your daughter of herself, and you of her, the bloody book of law you shall yourself read in the bitter letter, after your own sense. Yea, though our proper son stood in your action. Humbly, I thank your grace. Here is the man. This moor, who now it seems your special mandate for state affairs hath hither brought. We are very sorry for her. What in your own part can you say to this? Nothing but this is so. This beggars all reason. Most potent, grave and reverend seniors. My very noble and approved good masters. That I have taken away this old man's daughter, it is most true. True, I have married her. The very head and front of my offending hath this extent, no more. Rude am I in my speech, and little blessed with the soft phrase of peace, for since these arms of mine had seven years pith, till now so nine moons wasted, they fuse their Dearest action in the tented field. And little of this great world can I speak more than pertains to feats of royal battle. Therefore, little shall I grace my cause in speaking for myself. Yet by your gracious patience, I will a round, unvarnished tale deliver of my whole course of love. What drugs, what charms, what conjuration, and what Mighty magic. For such proceeding am I charged with all. I won his daughter. A maiden never bold, of spirit so still and quiet that her motion blushed at herself. And she, in spite of nature of herself, of country credit everything, to fall in love with what she feared to look on. It is a judgment made and most imperfect that will confess Perfection so could err against all rules of nature and must be driven to find out practices of cunning hell why this is so. I therefore vouch again that with some mixture powerful o'er the blood or with some drams conjured to this effect, he wrought upon her. To vouch this is no proof without more certain and more overt test than these thin habits and poor likelihoods of modern seeming to prefer against him. But Othello, speak. Did you, with indirect and forced courses, subdue and poison this young maid's affections, or came it by request, and such fair question as soul to soul afford? I do beseech you, send for the lady to the Sagittary, and let her speak of me before a father. If you do find me foul in her report, the trust, the office I do hold of you, not only take away. Let your sentence even fall upon my life. Fetch Desdemona hither. And then conduct them. You best know the place. And till she come, as truly as to heaven I do confess the vices of my blood, so justly to your grave ears I'll present how I did thrive in this fair lady's love, and she in mine. Say it. Othello. Father loved me. 
oft invited me. Still question me the story of my life from year to year. Battles, sieges, fortunes that I've done. I ran it through even from my boyish days to the very moment that he brought me to it. Wherein I speak of the most disastrous chances, of moving accidents by flood and field, of hairbreadth scapes and the imminent deadly breach, of being taken insolent fall and sold to slavery. Of my redemption thence and portents in my traveler's history, wherein of antros, vast deserts, idle, rough quarries, rocks and hills whose heads touch heaven. It was my head to speak. Such was the process. And of the cannibals that each other eat, the anthropophagi. And men whose heads do grow beneath their shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> this to hear were Desdemona seriously inclined, but still the house of hers would draw her thence. Whichever as she could with haste dispatch, she'd come again, and with a greedy ear devour up my discourse, which I observing took once client hour, and found good means to draw from her a prayer of earnest heart, that I would all my pilgrimage dilate, whereof by parcel should something heard, but not intensively. I did consent, and often did beguile her of her tears when I did speak of some distressful stroke that my youth suffered story being done, she gave me for my pains a world of sighs. She swore in faith was strange, was passing strange, was pitiful, was wondrous pitiful. She wished she had not heard it, and yet she wished that heaven had made her such a man. She thanked me and bade me. I had a friend that loved her. I should but teach him how to tell my story, and that would woo her. Upon this hint I speak. She loved me for the dangers I'd passed, and I loved her that she did pity them. This only is the witchcraft. I think this tale would win my daughter, too. <laughs> Good Brabantio, take up this mangled matter at the best. Men do their broken weapons rather you. Here comes the lady. Let her witness it. I pray you hear her speak. If she confesses she was half the wooer, destruction on my head if my bad blame light on the Come hither, gentle mistress. Do you perceive in all this noble company where most you owe obedience? My noble father, I do perceive here a divided duty. To you I am bound for life and education. My life and education both do learn me how to respect you. You are the lord of duty. I am hitherto your daughter. But here's my husband, and so much duty as my mother showed to you, preferring you before her father, so much I challenge that I may profess, due to the more, my lord. God be with you. I have done. I pray you on to the state affairs. I would rather adopt a child than get it. Come hither, more. I here do give thee that with all my heart, which but thou hast already, with all my heart I would keep from thee. For thy sake, Jewel, I am glad at soul I have no other child, for thy escape would teach me tyranny, to hang clogs on thee. I have done, my lord. Let me speak like yourself. 
and lay a sentence which as a grease or step may help these lovers into your favor. And remedies are past, the griefs are ended by seeing the worst which late on hopes depended. To mourn a mischief that is past and gone is the next way to draw new mischief on. What cannot be preserved when fortune takes patience or injury a mockery makes. <laughs> the rob that smiles steals something from the thief. He robs himself that spends a bootless grief. So let the Turks of Cyprus us beguile. We lose it not, so long as we can smile. These sentences, to sugar or to gall, being strong on both sides, are equivocal. But words are words. I never yet did hear that the bruised heart was healed through the ear. I humbly beseech you, proceed to the affairs of state. The Turk, with the most mighty preparation, makes for Cyprus. Othello, the fortitude of the place is best known to you. And though we have there a substitute of most allowed sufficiency, yet opinion, a sovereign mistress of effects, throws a more safer voice on you. You must therefore be content to slobber the gloss of your new fortunes with this more stubborn and boisterous expedition. Tyrant custom, most great senators, hath made the flinty and steel couch of war my thrice driven bed of down. I do acknowledge a natural and prompt alacrity I find in hardness, and do undertake these present wars against the Ottomites. Most humbly, therefore, bending to your state, I crave fit disposition for my wife, do reference of place and exhibition with such accommodation and resort as levels with her breeding. If you please, be it at her father's. I will not have it so. Nor I. Nor I. I would not bear as I to put my father in impatient thoughts by being in his eye. Most gracious Duke, to my unfolding, lend your prosperous ear and let me find a charter in your voice to assist my simpleness. What would you, Desdemona? That I did love the more to live with him. My downright violence and storm of fortunes made trumpet to the world, my heart subdued, even to the very quality of my lord. I saw a fellow's visage in his mind, and to his honors and his valiant parts did I my soul and fortunes consecrate. So that, dear lords, if I be left behind, a moth of peace, and he go to the war, the rights for which I love him are bereft me, and I a heavy interim shall support by his dear absence. Let me go with him. Let her have your voices. Vouch with me, heaven. I therefore beg it not to please the palate of my appetite, nor to comply with heat, the young affects should be defunct, but to be free and bounteous to her mind. And heaven defend your good souls that you think I will your great and serious business scant, for she is with me. Be it as you shall privately determine, either for her stay or going. The affair cries haste, and speed must answer it. You must hence tonight. Tonight, my lord. This night. With all my heart. At nine in the morning, here we'll meet again. Othello, leave some officer behind. And he shall our commission bring to you with such things else of quality and respect as doth import you. So please, Your Grace, my ensign, a man he is of honesty and trust. To his conveyance I assign my wife with what else need for your good grace you'll think to be sent after me. Let it be so. Good night to everyone. And noble senor, if virtue no delighted beauty lack, your son-in-law is far more fair than black. Let your brave Moor use Desdemona well. Look to her, Moor, if thou hast eyes to see. She has deceived her father, and may thee. I life upon her faith. Honest Iago, my Desdemona, must I leave to thee. I pray thee, let thy wife attend on her and bring them after in the best advantage. 
From this enough, I have the power of love of worldly matters and direction to spend with thee. We must obey the time. Oh, Iago. What will I do, thinkst thou? I go to bed and sleep. I will incontinently drown myself. If thou dost, I will never love thee after. Why, thou silly gentleman? It is silliness to live when to live is torment. Then have we prescription to die when death is our physician. Oh, villainous. I have looked upon this world for six times seven years. And since I could distinguish betwixt a benefit and an injury, I never knew man who knew how to love himself. Ere I would say I would drown myself for the love of a guinea hen, I would change my humanity with a baboon. What should I do? I confess it is my shame to be so fond, but it is not my virtue to amend it. Virtue? A fig. It is in ourselves that we are thus or thus. Our bodies are our gardens, to which our wills are gardeners. So that if we will plant nettles or sow lettuce, set hyssop or weed up thyme, supply it with one gender of herb or distract it with many, either to make it sterile with idleness or manured with industry. Why, the power and corrigible authority of all this lies in our wills. If the balance of our lives has not one scale of reason to poise another of sensuality, why, the blood and baseness of our natures would conduct us to the most preposterous conclusions, but we have reason. All our raging motions, our carnal stings, our unbitted lusts. Whereof I take this that you call love to be a sect or scion. It cannot be! It is merely a lust of the blood and a permission of the will. Come, be a man. Drown myself? Drown cats and blind puppies. I have professed me thy friend, and I confess me knit to thy deserving with cables of perdurable toughness. I can never better steady than now. Put money in thy purse. Follow thou these wars. Defeat thy favor with a usurped beard. I say, put money in thy purse. It cannot be long that Desdemona shall continue her love to the moor. Put money in thy purse, nor he his to her. It was a violent commencement in her. And thou shalt see an answerable sequestration. Put but money in thy purse. These moors are changeable in their wills. Fill thy purse with money. The food that to him now is as luscious as locusts will be to him shortly as bitter as colloquindita. She must change for youth. When she is sated with his body, she will see the errors of her choice. She must change. She must therefore put money in thy purse. If thou wilt needs damn thyself, do it a more delicate way than drown. <laughs> Make all the money thou canst. If sanctimony and a frail vow between an erring barbarian and a super subtle Venetian be not too hard for my wits and all the tribe of hell, thou shalt enjoy her. Therefore, make money. A pox on drowning thyself, it is clean out of the way. Seek thou rather to be hanged, encompassing thy joy, than to be drowned and go without her. Wilt thou be fast to my hopes if I depend on the issue? Thou can be sure of me. Go, make money. I have told thee often, and I retell thee again and again, I hate the more. My cause is hearted, thine hath no less reason. Let us be conjunctive in our revenge against him. If you can scuckle him, thou dost thyself a pleasure, me a sport. There are many events in the womb of time which will be delivered. Traverse, go. Provide thy money. We will have more of this tomorrow, adieu. Where shall we meet in the morning? At my lodgings. I'll be with thee betide. Go to, farewell. Uh, Rodrigo, do you hear? What say you? And no more of drowning. I am changed. I'll go sell all my land. Thus do I ever make my fool my purse. For I, mine own gained knowledge, should profane if I would time expend with such snipe, but for my sport and profit. I hate the more. In his thought abroad that twixt my sheets he has done my office. I know not if it be true, but I for mere suspicion in that kind would do as if for surety. 
he holds me well, the better shall my purpose work on him. Cassio, a proper man. Let me see now. To get his place and to plume up my will in double knavery. How, how? Let's see. After a time, to abuse Othello's ears, that Cassio's too familiar with his wife. He hath a person and a smooth disposed to be suspected, framed to make women false. The moor is of a free and open nature that thinks men honest that but seem to be so, and will as tenderly be led by the nose as asses are. <laughs> this monstrous Cape, can you discern at sea? Nothing at all, just a high wrought flood. I cannot twixt the heaven and the main descry a sail. He thinks the wind has spoke aloud at land. For a blast ne'er shook our battlements. They did ruffians so upon the sea. What ribs of oak when mountains melt on him can hold the mortars? What shall we hear of this? A segregation of the Turkish fleet, for do but stand upon the foaming shore. If that the Turkish fleet be not in shelter and embayed, they are drowned. It is impossible they bear it out. Use that! <laughs> Our walls are done. The desperate tempest hath so banged the Turks that their designment halts. Hey! A noble ship of Venice has seen a grievous rack and sufferance on most part of their fleet. How? Is this true? I, the ship is here put in. Now, Veronesa! Michael Cassio, lieutenant of the warlike Mordothello, is come on shore, the Moor himself at sea, and is in full commission here for Cyprus. I am glad on it. Tis a worthy governor. But this same Cassio, though he speak of comfort touching the Turkish loss, yet he looks sadly and prays the Moor be safe. Well, they were parted with fond and violent tempest. Oh, pray heaven he be, for I have served him, and the man commands like a full soldier. To the seaside, home. Thanks you, the valiant of this warlike isle that so approved the moor. Well, let the heavens give him defense against the elements, for I have lost him on a dangerous sea. Is he well shipped? His bark is startly timbered, and his pilot, a very expert at approved allowance. Therefore, my hopes not surfeited to death stand in bold cure. A sail! A sail! What noise? The town is empty and the realm of the sea stand ranks of people and they cry a sail! I hope to shave him for the governor. They do discharge their shot of courtesy. Uh, my friends at least. I pray you, sir, go forth and give us truth who it is that has arrived. I shall. My good lieutenant, is your general wise? <laughs> Most <laughs> fortunately. <laughs> He hath achieved a maid that paragon's description and wild fame, one that excels the quirks of blazoning pens, and in the essential vesture of creation does tire the engine. How now? Who is put in? Tis one Yago, ensign to the general. He has had most favorable and happy speed. Tempests themselves, high seas and howling winds, the guttered rocks, congregated sands, traitors and steep to clog the guiltless keel. It's having sense of beauty to omit their mortal natures, letting go safely by the divine Desdemona. What is she? She that I speak of, our great captain's captain, oh. left in the conduct of the Boliago. His footing here anticipates our thoughts of sin night speed. Oh, behold, the riches of the ship is come on shore. You men of Cyprus, let her have your knees. Hail to thee, lady. The grace of heaven before, behind thee, and on every hand, and wheel thee round. I thank you, valiant Cassio. What tidings can you tell me of my lord? He is not yet arrived. Nor know I aught but that he is well and will be shortly here. Oh, but I fear. How lost you company? The great contention of the sea and skies parted our fellowship. A sail! A sail! But hark! A sail! They give their greeting to the citadel. This likewise is a friend. See for the news. Good ensign, you are welcome. <laughs> welcome, mistress. Let her not gall your patience, good Iago, that I extend my manners. Tis my breeding that gives me this bold show of courtesy. <laughs> Sir, would she give you so much of her lips as of her tongue she oft bestows on me? 
You would have enough. <laughs> Alas, she has no speech. If faith too much, I find it still when I have leave to sleep. No. Mary, before your ladyship, I grant she puts her tongue a little in her heart and chides with thinking. Oh, you have little cause to say so. Oh, come on, come on. You are pictures out of door, bells in your parlours, wildcats in your kitchens, saints in your injuries, devils being offended, players in your housewifery and housewifs in your beds. <laughs> oh, fie upon thee, slanderer. Nay, it is true, or else I am a Turk. You rise to play and go to bed to work. Oh, <laughs> you shall not write my praise. Nay, let me not. What wouldst thou write of me, if thou shouldst praise me? O oh, gentle lady, do not put me to it, for I am nothing if not critical. <laughs> Tis true. <laughs> Come on, and say. Aye, madam. I am not merry, but I do beguile the thing I am by seeming otherwise. Come, how wouldst thou praise me? <laughs> I am about it, but my muse labours... Uh, and thus she is delivered. Thank heaven. If she be fair and wise, fairness and wit, the one's for use, the other useth it. Oh. Well praised. How if she be black and witty? If she be black and there to have a wit, you'll find a white that shall her blackness fit. <laughs> worse and worse. How if fair and foolish? She never yet was foolish that was fair, for even her folly helped her to an heir. <laughs> These are old, fond paradoxes to make fools laugh in the alehouse. Aye, madam. What miserable praise hast thou for her that's foul and foolish? <laughs> There's none so foul and foolish thereunto, but does foul pranks, which fair and wise ones do. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy ignorance. Thou praises the worst first. <laughs> but what praise couldst thou bestow upon a deserving woman indeed? She that was ever fair and never proud, had tongue at will, but yet was never loud. She that being angered, her revenge being nigh, bade her wrong stay and her displeasure fly. She that could think and ne'er disclose her mind, see suitors following and not look behind. She was a white, if ever such whites were. To do what? To suckle fools and chronicle small beer. Oh, <laughs> oh most lame and impotent conclusion. <laughs> Do not learn of him, Amelia, though he be thy husband. How say you, Cassio? Is he not a most profane and liberal counsellor? He speaks home, madam. You may relish him more in the soldier than in the scholar. <laughs> Who takes her by the palm? Oh, well said, whisper. With as little a web as this will I ensnare as great a fly as Cassio. Oh, smile upon her do. You say true, it is so indeed. If such tricks as these strip you out of your lieutenantry, it'd been better you not kissed your three fingers so oft. Which now again you are most apt to play the sir in. Very good, well kissed, an excellent courtesy, it is so indeed. Yet again your fingers to your lips, where they were cloister pipes for your sake. No more! I know his trumpet! Let's do this! No way he comes. Oh, my fair warrior. My dear Othello. It gives me wonder, great is my content, to see you here before me. Oh, my soul's joy. If after every tempest come such calms, may the winds blow till they waken death. <laughs> and let the laboring bark Climb hills of seas, Olympus high, and duck again as low as held from heaven. Oh, if to now to die, to now to be most happy, for I fear my soul hath a content so absolute that not another comfort like to this succeeds in unknown fate. The heavens forbid, but that our loves and comforts should increase, even as our days do grow. Amen to that, sweet powers. <laughs> I cannot speak enough to, of this content. It stops me here. It's too much of joy. And this... And this... The greatest discords be that e'er our hearts shall make. Oh, you are well 
tune now. But I'll set down the pegs that make this music as honest as I am. Come, let us to the castle. News, friends, how wars are done. The Turks are drowned. Oh, how does my old acquaintance of this isle? Honey, you shall be well desired in Cyprus. I found great love amongst them. I prattle out of fashion and I dote in my own comforts. Once more, well met it, Cyprus. You meet me presently at the uh, Come hither. If thou beest valiant, as they say, base men being in love, have then a nobility in their natures more than is native to them, list me. The lieutenant tonight watches on the court of guard. First, I must tell thee this. Desdemona is directly in love with him. With him? Why, it is not possible. Lay thy finger thus and let thy soul be instructed. Mark me with what violence she first loved the more, but for bragging and telling her fantastical lies. To love him still for prating, let not thy discreet heart think it. Her eye must be fed, and what delight shall she have to look on the devil? When the blood is made dull with the act of sport, there should be a game to inflame it, to give satiety a fresh appetite, loveliness in favor. Sympathy in years, manners, and beauties, all which the more is defective in. For want of these required conveniences, her delicate tenderness will find itself abused, begin to heave the gorge, disrelish and abhor the more. Very nature will instruct her in it and compel her to some second choice. Now, sir, who stands so eminent in the degree of this fortune as Cassio does? Cassio? The knave is handsome, young, and hath all those requisites in him that folly and green minds look after. A pestilent, complete knave, and the woman hath found him already. I cannot believe that in her. She's full of the most blessed condition. Blessed figs end. The wine she drinks is made of grapes. If she'd been blessed, you'd never have loved the more. Blessed pudding. Did not see her paddle with the palm of his hand? Did not mark that? Oh, yes, that I did. But that was but courtesy. Lechery by this hand. An index, an obscene prologue to the history of lust and foul thoughts. They met so near with their lips that their breaths embraced together. Villainous thoughts, Rodrigo. And when these mutualities so marshal the way, hard at hand comes the master and main exercise. The incorporate conclusion, pish! Sir, be you ruled by me. I have brought you from Venice. Watch you tonight for the command. I lay it upon you. Cassio knows you're not. I'll not be far from you. Do you find some occasion to anger Cassio? Either by speaking too loud or tainting his discipline or what other course you may choose, which the time may more favorably minister. Well? Sir, he's rash. And very sudden to collar. And happily may strike you. Provoke him that he may, for even out of that will I cause the displanting of Cassio. So shall you find a shorter journey to your desires. I will do this if, if you can bring it to any opportunity. I warrant you. Meet me by and by at the Citadel. Farewell. Adieu. That Cassio loves her. I do well believe it. That she loves him. It is apt to no great credit. The more, howbeit I endure him not, is of a constant, loving, noble nature. And I dare think he'll prove to Desdemona a most dear husband. Now do I love her, too. Not out of absolute lust, but that I do suspect the lusty moor hath leapt into my seat. The thought whereof doth like a poisonous mineral gnaw my innards, and nothing can or shall content my soul till I am even with him, wife for wife, for failing so. 
Yet did I put them more into a jealousy so strong that judgment cannot cure. Which thing to do, I'll have our Michael Cassio on the hip! Abuse him to the moor in the rank garb. For I fear Cassio with my nightcap too. Make the moor thank me, love me, reward me for making him egregiously an ass and practicing upon his peace and quiet, even to madness. It is here, but yet confused. Avery's plain face is never seen till used. Good, Michael. Look you to the guard tonight. Let's teach ourselves that honorable stop, not to outsport discretion. Iago hath direction what to do, but notwithstanding, will I with my personal eye look to it. Good night. But Michael, tomorrow at your earliest, let me have speech with thee. Welcome, Iago. We must to the watch. Not this hour, Lieutenant. It's not yet ten of the clock. Our general cast us this early for love of his Desdemona, who let us not therefore blame. He hath not yet made want in the night with her, and she is sport for Jove. She's a most exquisite lady. And I warrant her full of game. Indeed, she's a most uh, fresh and delicate creature. And what an eye she has! Methinks it sounds a parley to provocation. An inviting eye, and yet methinks right modest. And when she speaks, is it not an alarm to love? <laughs> she is indeed perfection. <laughs> well, happiness to their sheets. Come, Lieutenant, I have a stoop of wine. And here are a brace of cypress gallants. We would fain have a measure to the health of Black Othello. Ah, not tonight, good Iago. I have very poor and unhappy brains for drinking. I could well wish courtesy had invented some other custom of entertainment. They are our friends. But one cup, I'll drink for you. We have had but one cup tonight, and I was quality craft to fight it. Craft and I'm qualified too. And behold, what innovation it makes here. I am unfortunate in the infirmity and dare not task my weakness with any more. Man, it is a night of revels. The gallants desire it. Now, where are they? Uh, dislikes me. I'll do it. I can fasten but one cup on him. With that which he has drunk tonight already. He is full of for God, they have given me a rouse already. Oh, pray the little one. Uh, not fast. Pray, I'm a soldier. Oh, let me take care of you. Let me take care of you. Soldiers for man. most potent in potting. <laughs> your Dane, your German, and your spite bellied Hollander, drink ho! Oh! Oh! Uh, nothing to your English. <laughs> Is your Englishman so expert in his drinking? Oh! Hey! He drinks you with facility, your Dane dead drunk. He sweats not to overthrow your Alamein. <laughs> He gives your Hollander a vomit ere the next bottle can be filled. Oh. <laughs> to the health of our general. Oh, I'm oh. a lieutenant, and I'll do you justice. <laughs> oh, sweet England. King Stephen was in a worthy peer. His breeches cost him at a crown. He held them six months all to be with that he called the tailor's round. He was the weight of my renown and not a no degree. Oh, God, this is a more exquisite song than the other. Oh, Will you hear it again? Yeah. 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 No! No! I hold him unworthy of his place that does me those things. Oh, hell, God's above all, and every souls must be saved. 
And there be souls must not be saved. <laughs> <laughs> True, good lieutenant. Well, for my own part, no offense to the general, nor any man of quality, I hope to be saved. And so do I too, lieutenant. Oh. <laughs> Aye, but by your leave, not before me. The lieutenant is to be saved before the ensign. Let's have no more of this. Let's look to our affairs. Oh. <laughs> Give us our sins. <laughs> gentlemen, let's look to our business. <laughs> Do not think, gentlemen, I am drunk. This is my ensign. This is my right hand. This is my left. Do not think, though, I am drunk. I can stand well enough and speak well enough, too. Excellent. Well, excellent. Very well, then. You must not think, then, that I am drunk. <laughs> to the platform, masters. Come. Let's set the watch. See this fellow that has gone before. He is a soldier fit to stand by Caesar and give direction. But do but see his vice. I fear the trust a fellow puts in him will at some odd time as of infirmity. Shake this island. Is he often thus? Tis evermore his prologue to his sleep. But for well the general will put in mind of it. Perhaps he sees it not. His good nature prizes the virtue that appears in Cassio and looks not on his evils. Is not this true? It's great pity that the noble Moor should hazard such a place as his own second with one of them in graft infirmity. It were an honest action to say so to the Moor. Not I, for this fair island, for I do love Cassio well and would do much to cure him of this evil. Ha! Ah, what noise? <laughs> What's the matter, Lieutenant? Help, help, help here! Teach me my help duty. I'll beat the knave into a twig and bottle. I'll break, rogue. Lieutenant, <laughs> I pray you, sir, <laughs> hold your hand. Let me come, sir. I'll knock oh. you over the mazard. Oh, come. You're drunk. Drunk. Oh, my <laughs> oh. 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 Come <laughs> I say, go out and cry a mutiny. <laughs> Nay, good lieutenant. God's will to you. Oh, that's it. So light it dies upon his bosom. Say of that little bell, strikes the eye from her propriety. What's the matter, masters? Well, Mr. 
Santiago. It looks dead with breathing. Speak, who began this? On thy love, I charge thee. I do not know. Friends all, but now, even now, as if some planet and unwitted men, swords out, tilting one another's breasts in opposition bloody, I cannot speak any beginning to this peevish odds. How comes it, Michael, you are thus forgot? I pray you pardon me, I cannot speak. But, eh, uh, Montano, you were wont be civil. The gravity and stillness of your youth, the world hath noted. Your name is great in mouths of wisest censure. What's the matter that you unleash your reputation thus? Spend your rich opinion for the name of a night brawler. Give me answer to it! Your fellow, I am hurt to danger. Your officer Iago can inform you while I spare speech. Something now offends me of all that I do know. Oh, by heaven, my blood begins my safer guides to rule. And passion, having my best judgment collie, essays to lead the way. If I once stir, I'll do but lift this arm. The best of you shall sink in my rebuke. Give me to know how this foul art began. Who set it on? And he that is approved in this offense, though he had twinned with me both at birth, shall lose me. What? In a town of war? Yet while the people's hearts brim full of fear, to manage private and domestic quarrel in night and on the golden guard of safety. It is monstrous. The Argo, who began it? Partially a fine or leagued in office, how dost deliver more or less than truth? Thou art no soldier. Touch me not so near. I'd rather have this tongue cut from my mouth than it should do offence to Michael Cassio. Yet I persuade myself to speak the truth shall nothing wrong him. This it is, General. Montana and myself being in speech, there comes a fellow crying out for help and Cassio following him. Sir, this gentleman steps in to Cassio and entreats his pause. Myself the crying fellow did pursue, lest by his clamour, as it so fell out, the town might fall in fright. He swift of foot outran my purpose. When I came back, I found them close together at blow and thrust. Even as again they were when you yourself did find them. More of this matter cannot I report. But men are men. The best sometimes forget. Though Cassio did some little wrong to him, as men in rage strike those that wish them best. Yet surely Cassio, I believe, received from him that fled some strange indignity which passion could not pass. I know, Iago, thy honesty in love doth mince this matter, making it light to Cassio. Cassio, I love thee, but never more be officer of mine. What's the matter? All's well now, sweeting. Come away to bed. Sir, for your hurts, myself will be your surgeon. Lead him off. Yago, look with care about the town. Silence those whom this fire brawl distracted. Come, Desimona. Is the soldier's life to have their balmy slumbers wake with strife? What are you hurt, Lieutenant? I passed all surgery. Marry, God forbid. Reputation. Reputation, reputation. I have lost my reputation. I have lost the immortal part of myself, and what remains is bestial. My reputation. Oh, Iago, my reputation. As I am an honest man, I thought you had suffered some bodily wound. Uh, There's more sense in that than in reputation. Reputation is an idler and most false imposition. Off got without merit and lost without deserving. You have lost no reputation at all unless you repute yourself such a loser. Why, man, there are more ways to recover the general again. 
You are now but cast in his mood, a punishment more in policy than in malice. Even so as one would beat his offenceless dog to a front an imperious lion. Sue to him again, and he's yours. I will rather sue to be despised than to deceive so good a commander with so slight, so drunken, and so indiscreet an officer. Drunk and speak parrot and squabble, swagger, swear, and discourse fustian with one's own shadow. Oh, thou invisible spirit of wine, if thou hast no name to be known by, let us call thee devil! <laughs> Who was he that you followed with your sword? What had he done to you? I know not. Is it possible? I remember a, a mass of things, but nothing distinctly. A quarrel, but nothing wherefore. Oh, God. That men should put an enemy in their mouths to steal away their brains. That we should with joy, pleasance, revel, and applause transform ourselves into beasts. Ah, but you're now well enough. How come you thus recovered? <laughs> that pleased the devil drunkenness to give place to the devil wrath. One unperfectness shows me another to make me frankly despise myself. Come, you are too severe a moraler. As the time, the place, and the condition of this country stands, I could heartily wish this had not befallen. But since it is as it is, mend it for your own good. I will ask him for my place again. He shall tell me I am a drunkard. And I as many mouths as Hydra. Such an answer would stop them all. Be now a sensible man, by and by a fool, and presently a beast. Oh, strange. Every inordinate cup is unblessed, and the ingredient is a devil. Come, come. Good wine is a good familiar creature, if it be well used. Exclaim no more against it. Good lieutenant. I think you think I love you. I have well approved it, sir. I drunk. You or any man living may be drunk at a time, man. I tell you what you shall do. Our general's wife is now the general. I may say this in this respect, in that he hath devoted and given up himself to the contemplation, mark, and devotement of her parts and graces. Confess yourself freely to her. Importune her help to put you in your place again. She is of so free, so kind, so apt, so blessed a disposition. She holds it a vice in her goodness not to do more than she is requested. This broken joint between you and her husband entreat her to splinter, and my fortunes against any lay worth naming. This crack of your love shall be stronger than it ever was before. You advise me well. I protest in the sincerity of love and honest kindness. I think it freely. And betimes, in the morning, will I beseech the virtuous Desdemona to undertake for me. I am desperate of my fortunes if they check me here. You are in the right. Good night, Lieutenant. I must to the watch. Good night. Honesty, I'll go. And what's he then that says I play the villain? When this advice is free I give and honest, Probable to thinking, and indeed the course to win the more again. For it is most easy the inclining Desdemona to subdue in any honest suit. She's framed as fruitful as the free elements. <laughs> and then for her to win the more, were it to renounce his baptism, all seals and symbols of redeemed sin, as his soul is so infetted to her love that she may make, unmake, do what she list, even as her appetite shall play the god with his weak function. How am I, then, a villain, to counsel Cassio to this parallel course directly to his good? It's divinity of hell. While devils will the blackest sins put on, they do suggest at first with heavenly shows, as I do now. For whilst this honest fool plies Desdemona to restore his fortune, and she for him pleads strongly to the more, I'll pour this pestilence into his ear, that she repeals him for her body's lust. 
by how much she strives to do him good, she will undo her credit with the more. So will I turn her virtue into pitch. And out of her own goodness, make this net that shall enmesh them all. Oh! How now, Rodrigo? I do follow here in the chase, not like the hound that hunts, but one that fills up the cry. My money is almost spent. I have been tonight exceedingly well cudgeled. And the issue, I think, will be I have so much experience for my pains. So, with no money at all, and a little more wit, return again to Venice. How poor are they that have not patience? What wound did ever heal but by degrees? Thou knowest we work by wit and not by witchcraft, and wit depends on dilatory time. Does not go well. Cassio hath beaten thee, ah. and thou by that small hurt hath cashiered Cassio. Content thyself a while. By the master's morning. Pleasure and action make the hours seem short. Go thou, retire where thou art billeted. Away, I say, thou shalt hear more hereafter. But the Argo. Two things are to be done. My wife must move for Cassio to her mistress. I'll set her on. Myself a while to draw the more apart and bring him jump when he may Cassio find soliciting his wife. Aye, that's the way. I'll not devise by coldness and delay. Masters, play here. I'll content your pains. Something that's brief and uh, bid good morrow, General. <laughs> Sorry for your displeasure, but all will sure be well. The general and his wife are talking of it, and she speaks for you stoutly. The Moor replies that he you heard is of great fame in Cyprus and great affinity, and that in wholesome wisdom he might not but refuse you. But he protests. He loves you, and needs no other suitor but his likings to take the safest occasion by the front to bring you in again. Yet I beseech you, if you think fit or that it may be done, give me advantage of some brief discourse with Desdemona alone. Pray you come in. I will bestow you where you shall have time to speak your bosom freely. I am much bound to you. <laughs> These letters gave the Argo to the pilot. And by him do my duties to the state. That done, I'll be walking on the works. Repair there to me. Very well, my good lord, I'll do it. These fortifications, gentlemen, shall we see them? Be thou assured, good Cassio. I will do all my abilities in my behalf. Good madam, do. I warrant you it leaves my husband as if the cause were his. Oh, that's an honest fellow. Do not doubt, Cassio, but I will help my lord again. As friendly as you are. Whatever shall become of Michael Cassio, he is never anything but your true servant. I know it. I thank you. You do love my lord. You have known him long, and be you well assured, he shall in strangeness stand no farther off than in a politic distance. My lady, that policy may either last so long, or feed upon such nice and waterish diet, or breed itself so out of circumstance, that I, being absent and my place supplied, my general will, will forget my love and service. Do not doubt that. Before Amelia here, I give thee warrant of thy place, assure thee. If I do vow a friendship, I'll perform it to the last article. My lord shall never rest. I'll watch him tame and talk him out of patience. <laughs> His best
bed shall seem a school, his board a shrift. I'll intermingle everything he does with Cassio's suit. Therefore, be merry, Cassio. For thy solicitor shall rather die than give thy court. <laughs> Madam, here comes my lord. Uh, Madam, I, I'll, I'll take my leave. Why? Stay and hear me speak. Madam, not now. I'm very ill at ease, unfit for mine own purposes. Well, do your discretion. Was not that Cassio parted from my wife? Cassio, my lord, I'm sure I cannot think it, that he would steal away so guilty-like seeing your coming. I do believe it was he. How now, my lord? I have been talking with a suitor here, a man that languishes in your displeasure. Who wished you mean? Why, <laughs> your Lieutenant Cassio. Good, my lord, if I have any grace or power to move you, his present reconciliation take, for if he be not one, that truly loves you, that errs in ignorance and not in cunning. I have no judgment in an honest face. Prithee, call him back. Twenty hints now? Yes, faith, so humble that he have left part of his grief with me to suffer with him. Good love, call him back. Not now, sweet Desdemona. Some other time. But shalt be shortly. The sooner, sweet, for you. Shalt be tonight at supper? No, not tonight. Tomorrow, dinner, then. I shall not dine at home. I meet the captains at the Citadel. Why then tomorrow night, or Tuesday morn, or Tuesday noon, or night, or Wednesday morn? <laughs> I prithee name the time, but let it not exceed three days. In faith, his penitent. When shall he come? Tell me, Othello, I wonder in my soul what I could ask you that you should deny, or stand so murmuring on what Michael Cassio that came a-wooing with you. And so many a time when I have spoke of you dispraisingly hath ta'en your part. To have so much to do to bring him in. Trust me, I could do much. Pray no more. <laughs> Let him come when he will. I will deny thee nothing. Why, this is not a boon. Tis as I should entreat you, wear your gloves. Or feed on nourishing dishes. Or keep you warm. Or sue to you to do a peculiar profit to your own person. Nay, when I have a suit wherein I mean to touch your love indeed, it shall be full of weight and poise and fearful to be granted. I will deny thee nothing. Whereupon I do beseech thee, grant me this, to leave me but a little to myself. Shall I deny you? No. Farewell, my lord. Farewell, my Desdemona. I'll come to thee straight. Amelia, come. Be as your fancies teach you. Whate'er you be, <laughs> I am obedient. <laughs> oh, excellent wretch! Perdition, catch my soul, but I do love thee. When I love thee not, chaos is come again. My noble lord. What does I say, Yago? Did Michael Cassio, when you wooed my lady, know of your love? Indeed, from first to last. Indeed. Why dost thou ask? But for a satisfaction of my thought, no further harm. Why have I thought, Yago? I did not think he had been acquainted with her. Oh, yes, and went between us very oft. Indeed. Indeed. I indeed discerned so odd in that. Is he not honest? Honest, my lord. Honest, I honest. For aught I know. What dost thou think? Think, my lord. Think, my lord. By heaven, it echoes me as if there was some monster in his thought too hideous to be shown. Thou dost mean something. I heard thee say, even now, thou likes not that when Cassio left my wife. What didst not like? And when I told thee he was of my counsel in my whole course of wooing, thou criedst indeed, and didst contract, and pursed thy brow together as if thou then had shot up in thy brain some horrible conceit. If thou dost love me, show me thy thought. My lord, you know I love you. I think thou dost. And for I know thou art full of love and honesty, and waste thy words before thou givest them breath, 
Therefore, these stops of thine fright me the more. For such things in a false, disloyal knave are tricks of custom. But in a man that's just, there are close delations working from the heart that passion cannot rule. For Michael Cassio, I dare be sworn, I think that he is honest. I think so too. Men should be what they seem. Those that be not, would that they might seem none. Certain men should be what they seem. Well, then I think Cassio is an honest man. Hey, yet there's more in this. I pray thee, speak to me as to thy thinkings, as thou dost ruminate, and give thy worst of thoughts the worst of words. Good my lord, pardon me. Though I am bound to every act of duty, I am not bound to that all slaves are free to. Utter my thoughts, for I say they are vile and false. Thou dost conspire against thy friend, Iago, if thou but think'st him wronged and makest his ear a stranger to thy thoughts. I do beseech you, it were not for your quiet nor your good, nor for my manhood, honesty and wisdom to let you know my thoughts. What dost thou mean? Good name in man and woman, dear my lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. Who steals my purse steals trash. Tis something, nothing. Twas mine, tis his, and has been slave to thousands. But he, who filches from me my good name, robs me of that which not enriches him, and makes me poor indeed. By heaven, I know thy thoughts. You cannot, if my heart were in your hand, nor shall not, whilst it is in my castle. Oh. oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. Is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. That cuckold lives in bliss, who certain of his fate loves not his wronger, but oh, what damned minutes tells he o'er, who dotes yet doubts, suspects yet fondly loves. Oh, misery. Poor and content is rich, and rich enough, but riches finalists are as poor as winter to him that ever fears he shall be poor. Good God, the souls of all my tribe defend from jealousy. Why? <laughs> Why is this? Thinkst thou I'd make a life of jealousy? To follow still the changes of the moon with fresh suspicions? No. To be once in doubt is once to be resolved. Exchange me for a goat when I shall turn the business of my soul to such exufflicate and blown surmises matching thy inference. Tis not to make me jealous to say my wife is fair. Feet well. Love's company is free of speech, sings, plays, dances well. Where virtue is, these are more virtuous. Nor for mine own weak merits will I draw the smallest fear or doubt of her revolt. For she had eyes and chose me. No, Iago, I'll see before I doubt. When I doubt, prove. And on the proof, there's no more but this. Away at once with love or jealousy. <laughs> I am glad of this. For now I shall have reason to show the love and duty that I bear you with a franker spirit. Therefore, as I am bound, receive it from me. I speak not yet of proof. Look to your wife, observe her well with Cassio. Wear your eye thus, not jealous nor secure. I would not have your free and noble nature out of self-bounty be abused. Look to it. I know our country disposition well. In Venice they do let heaven see the pranks they dare not show their husbands. Their best conscience is not to leave it undone, but to keep it unknown. Dost thou say so? She did deceive her father marrying you. <laughs> And when she seemed to shake and fear your look, she loved the most. And so she did. Well, go to then. She that so young should give out such a seeming to seal her father's eyes up close as oak. He thought was witchcraft. But I am much to blame. I humbly do beseech you of your pardon for too much loving you. I am bound to thee forever. I see this hath a little dashed your spirits. Not a jot. Not a jot. Trust me, I fear it has. I hope you will consider what is spoke comes from my love. But I see you are moved. I am to pray you not to strain my speech to grosser issues, not a larger reach than to suspicion. I will not. Should you do so, my lord, my speech should fall into such vile success which my thoughts aim not. Cassio's my worthy friend. My lord, I see you are moved. No. 
not much moved. I do not think that Desdemona's honest. Long live she so. Long live you to think so. And yet how nature erring from itself. Aye, there's the point. As to be bold with you. Not to effect many proposed matches of her own clime, complexion and degree. Whereto we see in all things nature tends. <sighs> Mm -hmm. One may smell in this a will most rank, foul disproportions, mm -hmm. thoughts unnatural. Mm -hmm. Pardon me, I do not in position distinctly speak of her. Though I may fear her will reclining to her better judgment may fail to match you with her country forms and happily repair. Farewell, farewell. My lord. If more thou dost perceive, let me know more. Set on thy wife to observe. Leave me, your lord. My lord, I take my leave. Why did I marry? This honest creature doubtless sees and knows more, much more than he unfolds. <laughs> my lord, I would I might entreat your honor to scan this thing no farther. Leave it to time. Though it be fit that Cassio have his place, for sure he fills it up with great ability. Yet, if you please to hold him off a while, you will by that perceive him and his means. Note if your lady strain his entertainment with any strong or vehement importunity. Much will be seen in that. In the meantime, let me be thought too busy in my fears as worthy cause I have to fear I am, and hold her free. I do beseech your honor. Fear not my government. I once more take my leave. Fellows of exceeding honesty and knows all qualities with the learned spirit of human dealings. If I do prove her haggard, though that her jesses were my dear heartstrings, I'd whistle her off and let her down the wind to pray at fortune. Happily, for I'm black and have not those soft parts of conversation that chamberers have. Or for I am declined into the veil of years. That's <laughs> not much. She's gone. I am abused. And my relief must be to loathe her. Oh, curse of marriage that we can call these delicate creatures ours and not their appetites. I had rather be a toad and live upon the vapor of a dungeon than keep a corner in the thing I love for others' uses. It is the plague of great ones, prerogative that they less than the base. It is destiny unshunnable like death. Even then, this faulty plague is fated to us when we do quicken. Oh, now, my dear fellow. As the mona comes, if she be false, so then heaven mocks itself and not believe it. Your dinner and the generous islanders by you invited to attend your presence. I am to blame. Why do you speak so faintly? Are you not well? I have a pain upon my forehead here. Faith, that's with watching. Twill away again. Let me but bind it hard. Within this hour it will be gone. And that thing's too little. Leave me. First remembrance from the moor. My wayward husband hath a hundred times wooed me to steal it. But she so loves the token, for he conjured her as she should ever keep it, that she reserves it evermore about her to kiss and talk to. I'll have the work taken out and give it to Iago. What he will do with it, heaven knows, not I. 
I'm nothing but to please his fantasy. Michelle in Cassio's lodging. Lose this napkin. And let him find it. Trifles light as air. Out of the jealous confirmation, strong as proofs of holy writ. This may do something. The moor already changes with my poison. <laughs> Dangerous conceits are in their nature's poisons, which at the first are scarce found to distaste, but with a little act upon the blood, burn like the mines of sulphur. <laughs> I did say so. Look where he comes. Not poppies nor mandragora, nor all the drowsy syrups of the world shall medicine thee to that sweet sleep which thou ownst yesterday. Uh, uh, oh, to me. Why, how now, General? No more of that. Come on, be gone. Oh, set me on the rack. I swear, it's better to be much abused than but annoyed a little. What sense had I of her stolen hours of lust? I saw it not, thought it not, it harmed not me. I slept the next night well, fed well, was free and merry. I found not Cassio's kisses on her lips. He that is robbed, not wanting what is stolen. Let him not know it, and is not robbed at all. Sorry to hear this. I had been happy if the general can. Pioneers and all that tasted our sweet bodies, so I had nothing known. So now, forever, farewell to tranquil mind. Farewell, content. Farewell, the plumed troop and the big wars that make ambition virtue. Oh, farewell. Farewell, the neighing steed and the shrill trump, the spirit stirring drum, the ear piercing fife, the royal banner. An old quality, pride, pomp, and circumstance of glorious war. Oh, the immortal angels. With rude throats, the immortal Jove's dread clamors come to feet. Farewell. Fellows, occupations, go. Is it possible, my lord? Villain. Be sure you prove, my lover, who are. Be sure of it. Give me the ocular proof. For by the worth of mine eternal soul, thou hadst been better have been born a dog than answer my wicked wrath. Did it come to this? Make me to see it. Or at least so prove it. Let the probation bear no hinge, nor loop to hang a doubt on. A woe upon thy life. I know If who... thou dost slander her and torture me, never pray more. Abandon all remorse. On horror's head, horrors accumulate. Do deeds to make heaven weep. All that remains, for nothing canst thou to damnation add. Read her then! Oh, Grace. Oh, heaven forgive me. Are you a man? Have you a soul or sense? God be with you! Take my office! Oh, oh, wretched fool that loves to make thine honesty a vice! Oh, monstrous world! Take note, take note, O oh world! To be direct and honest is not safe. I thank you for this profit. From hence I love no friend, since love breeds such a fence. Nay, stay. Thou shouldst be honest. I should be wise. For honest is a fool that loses that it works for. By the world, I 
think my wife be honest. I think she's not. I think that thou art just. I think thou art not. I'll have some proof. Her name that was as fresh as Diane's visage is now begrimed and black as mine own face. If there be cords or knives, poison or fire or suffocating streams, I will not endure it. Would I were satisfied? You would be satisfied. I would, nay, I will. And may, but how satisfied? Would you, the supervisor, grossly gape on behold her chop? Death and death. For a tedious difficulty, I believe, to bring them to that prospect. Damn them then, whenever mortal eyes do see them bolster more than their own. What then? How then? Where's satisfaction? It were impossible you should see this. Were they as rank as goats, as hot as monkeys, as salt as wolves in pride, and gross as fools in ignorance made drunk? But yet I say, if imputation and strong circumstances which lead directly to the door of truth will give you satisfaction, you might have it. Give me a living reason she is disloyal. I do not like the office. Since I am entered in this cause so far, pricked to it by foolish honesty and love, I will go on. I lay with Cassio lately, and being troubled with a raging tooth, I could not sleep. There are a kind of men so loose of soul who in their sleeps will mutter their affairs. One of this kind is Cassio. In sleep I heard him say, Sweet Desdemona, let us be wary, let us hide our loves. Then, sir, did he grip and wring my hand, cry, Oh, sweet creature, then kiss me hard, as if he plucked up kisses by the roots that grew upon my lips, and then sigh and cry, and then say, Oh, damned fate that gave thee to the moor! Monsters! Monsters! Nay, this was but his dream. But this denoted a foregone conclusion. This Tis a shrewd be... doubt, though it be but a dream. This may help to thicken other proofs that do demonstrate thinly. I'll tear her all to pieces. Nay, yet be wise, yet we see nothing done. Hmm. She may be honest yet. Tell me but this. Did you not sometime see a handkerchief spotted with strawberries in your wife's hand? I gave her such a one. It was my first gift. I know not that. But such a handkerchief. Sure it was your wife. Did I today see Cassio wipe his beard with it? If be that. If be that, or any that was hers, it speaks against her with the other proof. Oh, that the slave had 40,000 lives. One is too poor, too weak for my revenge. Now do I see it is true. Look here, Iago. Oh, my fond love. Thus do I blow to heaven. It's gone. Arise, black vengeance from thy hollow hell. Yield up, O love, thy crown and hearty throne to tear on the sea. Swear, put on with thy front, for tis of aspect's tongues. Oh, black, black, black. Your mind may change. Never, Iago. Life is a pompic sea. As I see current and compulsive course, ne'er field retiring ebb, but to stew onto the Popontic and the Hellespont. Even so, my bloodiest thoughts, the violent pace shall ne'er look back, ne'er ebb to humble love. Feel that keep wide revenge. Swallow them up. Now by yon marble heaven. In the due reverence of a sacred vow. I here engage my words. Do not rise yet. Witness, you ever-burning lights above. You elements that clip us round about. Witness that here Iago doth give up. 
the execution of his wit, hands, heart, to wrong it Othello's service. Let him command, and to obey shall be in me remorse. What bloody business ever. I greet thy love, not with vain thanks, but with acceptance bounteous. Will upon the instant put it to it. Within these three days, let me hear thee say, Cassio's not alive. My friend is dead. Mm. It is done at your request. But let her live. Damn her, lewd minx, oh, damn her! Come, go with me apart. I will withdraw to furnish me with some swift means of death for the fair devil. Now, art thou my lieutenant? I am your own forever. Where should I lose that handkerchief, Amelia? Madam, I know not. Believe me, I have rather lost my purse full of crusados. And but my noble moor is true of mind, and made of no such baseness as jealous creatures are, were enough to put him to ill thinking. Is he not jealous? Who? He. I think the sun, where he was born, drew all such humours from him. Look where he comes. I will not leave him now till Cassio be called to him. How is it with you, my lord? Well, my good lady. Oh, hardness to dissemble. How do you, Desdemona? Well, my good lord. Give me your hand, my lady. The sand is moist. It yet hath felt no age, nor known no sorrow. Hot. Hot. This hand of yours requires a sequester from liberty, fasting and prayer, much castigation, exercise devout. Oh, here's a young and sweating devil here that commonly rebels. Is a good hand, a frank one. You may indeed say so. It was that hand that gave away my heart. A liberal hand. The hearts of old Gave hands, but our new heraldry is hands, not hearts. I cannot speak of this. Come now, your promise. What promise, Chuck? I have sent to bid Cassio come speak with you. I have a salt and sorry room offends me. Lend me thy handkerchief. Here, my lord. That which I gave thee. I have it not about me. Not? No, indeed, my lord. That's a fault. That handkerchief did an Egyptian to my mother give. She was a charmer and could almost read the thoughts of people. She told her, while she kept it, would make her amiable and subdue my father entirely to her love. But if she lost it or made a gift of it, my father's eye should hold her loathe it and his spirit should hunt after new fancies. She, dying, gave it me, and bid me, when my fate would have me wild, to give it her. I did so, and take heed on. <laughs> Make it a darling, like your precious eye, to loose or to give to way, or such perdition as nothing else could match you. Is it possible? It's true. There's magic in the web of it. A sibyl that had numbered in the world the sun to course 200 compasses in her prophetic fury sold the work. The worms were hallowed that did breathe the silk, and it was dyed in mummy, which the skillful conserved of maidens' hearts. In faith, it's true. Most veritable. Therefore, 
Look to it well. And would to God that I had never seen it. Huh? Wherefore? Why do you speak so startlingly and rash? It's lost. It's gone. Speak, is out of the way. Heaven bless us. Say you? It is not lost. But what an if it were. Huh? I say it is not lost. Then fetched. Let me see it. Why so I can, sir. But I will not now. This is a trick to put me from my suit. Pray you let Cassio be received again. That's neither handkerchief my mind misgives. Come, come, you'll never meet a more sufficient man. The handkerchief. I pray you, talk me of Cassio. The handkerchief. A man that all this time hath founded his good fortunes on your love, shared dangers. The with handkerchief. You. In sooth, you are to blame. Way. Is not this man jealous? I ne'er saw this before. Sure, there's some wonder in this handkerchief. I am most unhappy in the loss of it. Tis not a year or two shows us a man. They're all but stomachs, we all but food. They eat us hungrily, and when they are full, they belch us. There's no other way. Tis she must do it. And lo, the happiness. Go and importune her. How now, good Cassio? And what's the news with you? Madam, my former suit. I do beseech you that by your virtuous means I may again exist and be a member of his love whom I, with all the office of my heart, entirely honor. Alas, thrice gentle Cassio, my advocation is not now in tune. My lord is not my lord, nor should I know him. Were he in favor, as in humor, altered, so help me every spirit sanctified, as I have spoken for you all my best and stood within the blank of his displeasure for my free speech. You must a while be patient. What I can do, I will. And more I will than for myself, I dare. Let that suffice you. Is my lord angry? He went hence but now, and certainly in strange unquietness. Can he be angry? I have seen the cannon when it has blown his ranks into the air, and like the devil from his very arm puffed his own brother. Can he be angry? Something of moment, then. I will go meet him. There's matter in it indeed if he be angry. I prithee do so. Something sure of state, either from Venice or some unhatched practice made demonstrable here in Cyprus to him, hath puddled his clear spirits. And in such cases, men's natures wrangle with inferior things. Though great ones are their object, tis even so. Pray heaven it be state matters as you think. And no conception nor no jealous toy concerning you. Alas, the day! I never gave him cause. Jealous souls will not be answered so. They are not ever jealous for the cause, but jealous for they are jealous. Tis a monster, a god upon itself, born on itself. Heaven keep that monster from Othello's mind. Lady, amen. I will go seek him. Cassio, walk hereabout. If I do find him fit, I'll move your suit and seek to effect it to the uttermost. Only thank your ladyship. Ah, there is you, friend Cassio. Make you from home. Faith, sweet, I, I, I was coming to your house. And I was going to your lodging, Cassio. What? Keep a week away. Oh, seven days and seven nights. Eight score, eight hours. Love is absent hours more tedious than the dial eight score times. Oh, weary reckoning. Pardon me, sweet Bianca. I have this wire with leaden thoughts been pressed. But I shall in a more convenient time strike off this score of absence. Sweet. Take me this work out. Oh, Cassio, whence came this? This is some token from a newer friend. To the felt absence now, I feel a cause. It's come to this. Well, go to, woman. Throw your vile guesses back into the devil's teeth from whence you have them. You are jealous now that this is from some mistress, some remembrance. No, by my friend. Faith, Bianca. Why, whose is it? I know not, sweet. I found it in my chamber. I like the work well. 
Let it be demanded, as like enough it will, I would have it copied. Take it and do it. And leave me for this time. Leave you? Where for? No, I do attend here on the general and consider it no addition nor my wish to have him see me woman. <laughs> Why, I pray you. Not that I love you not. But that you do not love me. I pray you, bring me on the way a little and say if I shall see you soon at night. Tis but a little way that I can bring you, for I attend here on the general. <laughs> ah, but I'll see you soon. Mm. <laughs> Tis very good. I must be circumstanced. <laughs> <laughs> Think so? Think so, Iago. With a kiss in private? An unauthorized kiss. But to be naked with a friend in bed an hour or more, not meaning any harm? Take it to bed, Iago, and not mean harm. Do nothing, tis a venial slip. But if I give my wife a handkerchief... Well, then? Why, then, tis hers, my lord, and being her, she may, I think, bestow it on any man. She is protectress of her honor, too, may she give that? Her honor is an essence that's not seen. They have it very often, have it not. But for the handkerchief. Oh, I would most gladly have forgotten. Thou saidst, oh, it comes o'er my memory as doth the raven or the infected house mourning to all. He had my handkerchief. I what of that? That's not so good now. What if I had said I had seen him do your wrong? I heard him say. Have he said anything? He hath, my lord, but be you well assured, nothing he'll not unswear. What have he said? Well, that he did. But I know not what he what? did. What? What? Lie. With her? With her, on her, what you will. Lie with her, lie on her. We say, lie on her when they belie her. Lie with her. Soon. That's fulsome. Confess, handkerchief. <laughs> to confess and be hanged for his labor. First to be hanged, and then to confess. I tremble at it. Nature would not invest herself with such shattering passion without some instruction. It is not words that Shakespeare thus. Bitch. Oh. No, speech, ears, lips, handkerchief, confess. Oh, master. Oh, heaven. Work on my medicine. Work. heaven, I mock you not, which would bear your fortune like a man. A haunted man's a monster in the beast. Did he confess it? Well, as you were here, overwhelmed with your grief, a passion most unsuiting such a man, Cassio came hither. I bade him anon return and here speak with me, for I will make him tell the tale anew. Where, how, how oft, how long ago, and when, he hath and is again to cope your wife. I say, but mark his gesture. They marry patience, or I shall say you're all in all in spleen and nothing of a man. So here, Iago, I shall be found most cunning in my patience, but thus I hear most bloody. That's not a miss, but yet keep time in Will you withdraw? Now. Well, I question Cassio of Bianca. He, when he hears of her, cannot restrain from the excess of laughter. Here he comes. As he shall smile, Othello shall go mad. How do you, Lieutenant? 
Uh, the worse that you give me the addition whose want even kills me. Cry Desdemona well, and you are sure on it. Now, if this suit lay in Bianca's power, how quickly should you speed? <laughs> <laughs> Alas, poor caitiff. Look he laughs already. Ah, alas, poor rogue. I think of faith she loves me. Now he denies his faith and true. laughs it I am out. A very she gives it out that you shall marry her. Do you intend it? <laughs> I marry her? What a customer. Prithee, bear some charity to my wit. Do not think it so unwholesome. Do you <laughs> triumph, Roman? Do you triumph? This is the monkey's own giving out. She has persuaded I will marry her out of her own love and flattery, not out of my promise. Uh, she was here even now. She hunts me every place. I was the other day talking on the sea bank with certain Venetians, and thither comes the bauble. And by this hand, she falls me thus about the neck. <laughs> so hang. Now he tells how she plucked him to my chamber. Oh, I see that nose of yours, but not the dog I shall throw it to. Well, <laughs> I must leave her company. Before me, look where she comes. There's such another fit you. Marry a perfumed one. What do you mean by this haunting of me? Let the devil and his dam haunt you. What did you mean by that same handkerchief you gave me even now? I was a fine fool to take it. I must take out the whole work. A likely piece of work that you should find it in your chamber and know not who left it there. This is some minx's token, and I must take out the work? There! Give it your hobby horse, wheresoever you pat it. I'll take out no work on it. By heaven, that should be my handkerchief. And you will not come when you're next prepared for. After her. After. With faith I must. She'll rail in the streets else. Oh, will you uh, sup there? Yes, I intend so. Well, I may chance to see you, for I would very fain speak with you. <laughs> Prithee, come, will Go you? Go to, no more. <laughs> How oh, shall I murder him, Yago? Did you perceive how he laughed at his vice? Oh, Yago. Did you see the handkerchief? Was that mine? Yours by this hand. And to see how he prizes the foolish woman, your wife. She gave it him, and he hath given it to his whore. I would have him nine years of killing. A fine woman, a fair woman, a sweet woman. Hey, you must forget this. I let her rot and perish in Madame tonight, for she shall not leave. No. My heart is turned to stone. I strike it, and it hurts my hand. For oh, the world has not a sweeter creature. She might lie by an emperor's side and command him to hey, ask. That's not your way. Anger. I do but say what she is. So delicate with a needle, an admirable musician. Oh, she could sing the savageness out of a bear. She is the worse for all this. Oh, a thousand, thousand times. And yet. Oh, gentle a condition. I too gentle. I. That's certain. But yet, the pity of it, Iago. Oh, Iago. The pity of it, Iago. If you are <laughs> so fond of her iniquity, give her patent to offend. For if it touch not you, it come near nobody. Trap her to messes! Can't call me. It is foul in her. With my officer. That's fouler. Get me some poison, Iago. This night, I'll not expostulate with her, lest her body and beauty unprovide my mind again. This night, Iago. Do it not with poison. Strangle her in her bed. The very bed she hath contaminated. Good, good. The justice of it pleases. Very good. Cassio, let me be his undertaker. You shall hear more by midnight. Excellent good. The trumpet is that same. Did Ludovico come from the Duke? And see, your wife is with him. God save you, worthy general. Oh, my heart, sir. The Duke and senators of Venice greet you. I kiss the instrument of their pleasures. And what's the news, good cousin Ludovico? I am very glad to see you, signor. Welcome to Cyprus. I thank you. How does Lieutenant Cassio? Lives, sir. There's fallen between him and my lord an unkind breach. 
but you shall make all well. Are you sure of that? My lord? Oh, he did not call. He's busy in the paper. Is there division betwixt thy lord and Cassio? A most unhappy one. I would do much to atone them for the love I bear to Cassio. Fire and brimstone. My lord. Are you wise? What is he angry? Maybe the letter moved him, for as I think they do command him home, deputing Cassio in his government. By my troth, I'm glad on it. Indeed? My lord. I am glad to see you mad. My sweet Othello. Devil! I have not deserved this. My lord, this would not be believed in Venice, though I should swear I saw it. Tis very much. Make her amends, she weeps. Oh, devil, devil. If the earth could teem with women's tears, its drop she falls would prove a crocodile. Out of my sight. I will not stay to offend you. Truly an obedient lady, I do beseech your lordship, call her back. Mistress. What would you with her, sir? Who, I, my lord? I, you did wish that I would make her turn, sir. She can turn and turn and yet go on and turn again. And she can weep, so weep. And she's obedient, as you say, obedient. Very obedient. Proceed you in your tears. Concerning this, sir, I am commanded home. Get you away. I'll send for you anon. Sir. I obey the mandate and will return to Venice. Hence the vault! Cassio shall have my grace. And so, tonight I do entreat that we may sup together. You are welcome, sir, to Cyprus. Go, San Pate! Is this the noble Moor whom our full senate call all in all sufficient? Is this the nature whom passion could not shake? Whose solid virtue the shot of accident nor dart of chance could neither graze nor pierce? He is much changed. Are his wits safe? Is he not light of brain? Is that he is? I may not breathe my censure. What? Strike his wife? Faith. Yet would I knew that stroke would prove the worst. Is it his use? Or did the letters work upon his blood and new create this fort? Alas. Alas, tis not honesty in me to speak what I have seen and known. You shall observe him and mark how he continues. I am sorry that I am deceived in him. You have seen nothing then. Nor ever heard, nor ever did suspect. Yes, you have seen Cassio and she together. But then I saw no harm. <laughs> did they never whisper? Never, my lord. No, send you out of the way. Never. To fetch her fan, her gloves, her mask, nor nothing? Never, my lord. That's strange. I durst, my lord, to wager she is honest, lay down my soul. At stake. If you think other, remove your thought, it doth abuse your bosom. Any wretch hath put this in your head. Let heaven requite it with a serpent's curse. For if she be not honest, chaste, and true, there's no man happy. The purest of their wives is foul as slander. Bid her come hither. Go. Oh. Says enough. Yet it's a simple board that cannot say as much. This is a subtle whore. A closet, lock and key, a villainous secret, and yet she'll kneel and pray. I've seen her do it. My lord, what is your will? Pray, Chuck. Come hither. What is your pleasure? Let me see your eyes. Look in my face. What horrible fancy is this? Some of your function, mistress. Leave 
procreants alone and shut the door. Cough or cry him if anybody come. Your mystery, your mystery. Nay, dispatch! Upon my knees, what doth your speech import? I understand a fury in your words, but not the words. Why? What art thou? Your wife, my lord, your true and loyal wife. Come. Swear it. Damn thyself. Lest being like one of heaven, the devils themselves would fear this easy. Therefore be double damn. Swear thou art honest. Heaven doth truly know it. Heaven truly knows thou art false as hell. To whom, my lord? With whom? How am I false? Oh, Desdemona. Away, away, away. Alas, the heavy day. <laughs> Why do you weep? Am I the motive of these tears, my lord? If happily you, my father, do suspect an instrument of this your calling back, lay not your blame on me. If you have lost him, I have lost him too. Had it pleased heaven to try me with affliction, had they rained all kinds of sores and shames on my bare head, steeped me in poverty to the very lips, given the captivity me and my utmost hopes, I should have found in some place of my soul a drop of patience. But alas, to make me a fixed figure for the time of scorn to point it slow one moving finger at. Yet, could I bear that too? Well, very well. But there, where I have garnered up my heart, where either I must live or bear no life, the fountain front of which my current runs or else dries up, to be discarded thence, or to keep as a system for foul toads to not engender in. Turn thy complexion there, patience, thou young and rose-lipped cherubim. I, there, look grim as hell. I hope my noble lord esteems me honest. Oh, I... The summer flies are in the shambles that pick and even with blowing. Oh, thou weed, who art so lovely, fair, and smell so sweet, the sense aches at thee. Wouldst thou had now been born? Alas! What ignorant sin have I committed? Was this fair paper, this most Goodly book made to write whore upon. What committed? Committed? Oh, the public commoner. I should make very forges of my cheeks that would to send us burn up modesty did I but speak thy deeds. What committed? Heaven stops the nose at it. And the moon winks, and the body wind kisses all it treats. It's hushed within the hollow mine of earth and will not hear it. What committed? Impudent strumpet! By heaven, you do me wrong. Are not you a strumpet? No, as I am a Christian, if to preserve this vessel for my lord. From any other foul, unlawful touch, be not a strumpet. I am none. What? Not a whore? No, as I shall be saved. Is it possible? Heaven forgive us. I cry you mercy then. 
I took you for that cunning whore of Venice that married with Othello. You, mistress, you that have the office opposite to St. Peter and keep the gate of hell. You, you, I, you. We have done. Yes, money for your pains. Pray you, turn the key and keep her counsel! Lass, what does this gentleman conceive? How do you, madam? How do you, my good lady? Faith, half asleep. Madam, what's the matter with my lord? Who? Why, with my lord, madam. Who is thy lord? He that is yours, sweet lady. I have none. Do not talk to me, Amelia. I cannot weep, nor answer have I none but what should go by water. Prithee, tonight lay on my bed our wedding sheets, remember? And call thy husband hither. Here's a change indeed. Tis meet I should be used so. Very meet. How have I been behaved that he might stick the smallest opinion on my least misuse? What is your pleasure, madam? How is it with you? I cannot tell. Those that do teach young babes do it with gentle means and easy tasks. He might have chid me so, for in good faith I am a child to chiding. What is the matter, lady? Alas, Iago, my lord hath so behoard her, thrown such despite in heavy terms upon her, as true hearts cannot bear. Am I that name, Iago? What name, fair lady? Such as she says my lord did say I was. He called her whore. A beggar in his drink could not have laid such terms upon his callot. Why did he so? I do not know. I am sure I am none such. Oh, do not weep, do not weep, alas a day. How she forsook so many noble matches, her father and her country, all her friends, to be called whore. Would it not make one weep? Does my wretched fortune. Beshrew him for it. How comes this trick upon him? Nay, heaven doth know. I'll be hanged of some eternal villain, some busy and insinuating rogue. Some cogging, cozening slave to get some office have not devised the slander, I'll be hanged else. Why, there is no such man. It is impossible. If any such there be, heaven pardon him. I'll halt or pardon him in hell nor his bones. Why should he call her whore? Who keeps her company? The more is abused by some most villainous knave, some base notorious knave, some scurvy fellow. Oh, heaven, that such companions thou'd stand fold and put in every honest hand a whip. To lash the rascals naked through the world, even from the east to the west. Speak within door. Fie upon them. Some such squire he was who turned your wits to see me side without and made you suspect me with the more. You are a fool. Go to. Oh, good Iago. What shall I do to win my lord again? Good friend, go to him. For by this light of heaven, I know not how I lost him. Here I kneel. If e'er my will did trespass against his love, either in discourse of thought or actual deed, or that mine eyes, mine ears, or any sense delighted them in any other form, or that I do not yet and ever did and ever will, though he do shake me off to beggarly divorcement, love him dearly. 
Comfort forswear me. Unkindness may do much. And his unkindness may defeat my life. But never taint my love. I cannot say. Whore. It doth abhor me now I speak the word. To do the act that might the addition earn, not the world's mass of vanity could make me. I pray you'll be content. Tis but his humor. The business of the state does him offense, and he doth chide with you. If twere no other. Tis but so I you. Hark how these instruments summon to supper. Go in and weep not. All things will be well. Justly with me. What? In the country. Oh, every day thou dafts me with some device, Iago, and rather, as it seems to me now, keepst from me all conveniency than suppliest me with the least hope of advantage. I will indeed no longer endure it, nor am I yet persuaded to put up in peace that which already I have foolishly suffered. Uh, will you hear me? Faith, I have heard too much, for your words and performances are no kin together. You deal with me most unjustly. With not but truth. I have wasted myself out of means. The jewels you have had for me to deliver to Desdemona would half have corrupted a votarist. You tell me she hath received them and return me expectations and comforts of sudden respect and acquaintance, but I find none. Go to. Very well. Very well. Go to? I cannot go to, man, nor tis not very well. Nay, I think it is scurvy, and begin to find myself fopped in it. Very well. I tell you, tis not very well. I will make myself known to Desdemona. If she will return me my jewels, I will give over my suit and repent me my unlawful solicitations. If not, assure yourself I will seek satisfaction of you. You have said now? I, and said nothing but what I protest intentment of doing. Why, now I see there's metal in thee. And even from this instant to build in thee a better opinion than ever before. Give me thy hand, Rodrigo. Thou hast taken against me a most just exception, but that I protest I have dealt most directly in thy affair. It hath not appeared. I grant indeed it hath not appeared, and your suspicion is not without uh, wit and judgment. But, Rodrigo, if thou hast that in thee indeed, which I have greater reason to believe now than ever, I mean purpose, courage, valour, this night show it. If thou the next night following enjoy not Desdemona, take me from this world with treachery and devise engines for my life. Well, what is it? Is it within reason and compass? Sir, there is a special commission from Venice to depute Cassio in Othello's place. Is that true? Why then Othello and Desdemona return again to Venice? Oh, no. He goes into Mauritania and taketh away with him the fair Desdemona unless his abode can be lingered here by some accident, wherein none can be so determinate as the removing of Cassio. How do you mean removing of him? Why, by making him incapable of Othello's place, knocking out his brains. And that you would have me do? Aye, if you will dare do yourself a profit and a right, he sups tonight with a harlotry, and thither will I go to him. No, if you I... will watch his going thence, which I will fashion to fall out between twelve and one, you may take him at your pleasure. I'm... I will be there to second your attempt, and it will fall between us. I... Come not stand amazed at it, but go along with me. I will show you such a necessity in his death that you will feel yourself bound to put it on him. It is now high supper time. Come, let us about it. I will hear further reasons for this. And you shall be satisfied. Come.
How goes it now? He looks gentler than he did. He says he will return incontinent. He hath commanded me to go to bed and bid me to dismiss you. Dismiss me? It was his bidding. Therefore, good Amelia, give me my nightly wearing and adieu. We must not now displease him. I would you had never seen him. So would not I. My love does so approve him that even in his stubbornness, his checks, his frowns, prithee unpin me. Have grace and favor in them. I have laid those sheets you bade me on the bed. Who's one? Good faith. How foolish are our minds. If I do die before thee, prithee, shroud me in one of those same sheets. Come, come, you talk. My mother had a maid called Barbary. She was in love. And he she loved proved mad and did forsake her. She had a song of Willow. An old thing it was, but it expressed her fortune. And she died singing it. That song tonight will not go from my mind. I have much to do but to go hang my head all on one side and sing it like poor Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> Prithee dispatch. Shall I go fetch your nightgown? No. Unpin me here. This Lodovico is a proper man. A very handsome man. He speaks well. I know a lady in Venice would walk barefoot to Palestine for a touch of his nether lip. <laughs> The poor soul sat sighing by a sycamore tree. Sing all a green willow, her hand on her bosom. Her head on her knee. Sing willow, willow. Willow, the fresh streams ran by her and murmured her moans. Sing willow, 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 her salt tears fell from her and softened the stone. Sing willow. Lay by these. Willow. Willow. Prithee, hide thee, he'll come anon. Sing all a green willow. Must be my garland. Let nobody blame him. His scorn I approve. Nay, hey, that's not next. I call. Hark, who is it that knocks? It is the wind. I call my love false love. But what said he then? Sing willow, willow. Willow, if I caught more women, you'll couch with more men. So get thee gone. Good night. Mine eyes do itch. Doth that bode weeping? It is neither here nor there. Oh, these men. He's a man. Dost thou in conscience think, tell me, Amelia, that there be women 
do abuse their husbands in such gross kind? There be some such, no question. Wouldst thou for all the world? Why would not you? No, by this heavenly light. No, I neither by this heavenly light. I might do it as well in the dark. Wouldst thou for all the world? The world's a huge thing. It's a great price for a small vice. By my troth, I think thou wouldst not. By my troth, I think I should. And then undo it when I had done it. Mary, I would not do such a thing for a joint ring, nor for measures of lawn, nor for gowns, petticoats, nor caps, nor any petty exhibition. But for all the whole world, that's pity. It would not make her husband a cuckold to make him a monarch. I would venture purgatory for it. Beshrew me if I would do such a wrong for the whole world. The wrong is but a wrong in the world. And having the world for your labors, it is but a wrong in your own world. And you might quickly make it right. I do not believe there is any such woman. Yes, a dozen. And as many to the vantage as would store the world they played for. But I do think it is their husbands' faults if wives do fall. Say they slack their duties and pour our treasures into foreign laps. Or else break out in peevish jealousies, throwing restraint upon us. Or say they strike us. Or scan our former having in despite. Why, we have galls. And though we have some grace, yet have we some revenge. Hmm. Let husbands know. Their wives have sense like them. They see and smell. And have their palates both for sweet and sour as husbands have. What is it they do when they change us for others? Is it sport? I think it is. And doth affection breed it? I think it doth. Is frailty that thus errs? It is so too. And have not we affections, desires for sport, and frailty as men have? <laughs> then let them use us well, else let them know. The ills we do, their ills instruct us so. <sighs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> Heaven me such usage send, not to pick bad from bad, but by bad mend. <laughs> This bulk. Straight will he come. Wear thy good rapier bare and put it home. Quick, quick. Fear nothing, I'll be at thy elbow. It makes us or it mars us. Think on that and fixed most firm my resolution. Be near at hand. I may miscarry in the deed. Here at thy hand. Be bold and take thy stand. I have no great devotion to the deed. hath given me satisfying reasons. Tis but a man gone. Forth, my sword, he dies. Not so, I hear him coming. I have rubbed this young quad almost to the sense. Now, whether he kill Cassio or Cassio, him or East to kill the other, every way makes my gain. <laughs> Villain, thou diest! Oh, ah. Mine enemy indeed, but that my coat is better than thou knowest. I will make proof of thine. Thank you. 
silent is this town. Hark, did not you hear a cry? Oh, murder, That's murder! Who may you be? Are you of good or evil? As you shall prove us, praise us. Senor Lodovico! He, sir. I cry you mercy. His Cassio hurt my villains. Cassio? How is it, brother? My leg is cut in two. Big! Who is it that cried? My dear Cassio! Oh, notable strumpet! Cassio, may you suspect who they should be that have thus mangled you? No, I. Uh, uh. Alas, he fades. So Gentlemen, all I do suspect this trash to be a party in this injury. Send me a light. Know me this face or no? Alas, my dear friend and fellow countryman, Rodrigo. No. Yes, sure, tis Rodrigo. What, of Venice? Even he. Do you know him? Nor am I. Senor Graziano, I do cry your humble mercy. For you, miss. Mind you, your business. <laughs> Pray look upon her. You see, gentlemen, nay, guiltiness will speak, though tongues were out of use. Lass, what's the matter? What's the matter, husband? Cassio hath here been set in the dark by Rodrigo and fellows that escaped. He's almost slain and Rodrigo quite dead. Lass, good gentleman. Lass, good Cassio. This is the fruit of whoring. Prithee, Amelia, go know of Cassio where he stopped tonight. What shake you at that? He stopped at my house, but I therefore shake not. Oh, did he so? I charge you, go with me. Fie, fie upon you, strumpet! I am no strumpet! What of life as honest as you that thus abuse me? Sir, fie upon you! Oh! Oh! oh. Strumpet! Strumpet! Come, mistress! You must tell us another tale! Amelia, run you to the citadel. Tell my lord and lady what hath happened. Will you go on a four? Okay. This is the night that either makes me or foredoes me quite. It is the cause, it is the cause, my soul. Let me not name it to you, you chaste stars. It is the cause. I have not shed her blood, nor scarred her whiter skin of ours than snow, and smooth as monumental alabaster. Yet she must die, else she betray more men. Put out the light, and then put out the light. If I Quench thee, the flaming minister. I can again thy former light restore, should I repent me. But once put out thy light, the cunning pattern of excelling nature, I know not where is that Promethean heat that can thy light relume. When I have plucked Oh, I cannot give it vital growth again. It needs must wither. Smell it on the tree. Dost almost persuade justice to break her sword. One more, one more. Yeah. 
Be thus, when thou art dead, and I will kill thee and love thee after. One more, and this the last. So sweet was ne'er so fatal. I must weep, but they are cruel tears. This sorrow's heavenly. It strikes where it doth love. Mm. She wakes. Who's there? A fellow? I, Desdemona. Will you come to bed, my lord? Have you prayed tonight, Desimona? Aye, my lord. If you bethink yourself of any crime unreconciled as yet to heaven and grace, solicit for it straight. Alack, what may you mean by that? Well, do it and be brief. I will walk by. I would not kill thy unprepared spirit. No, heaven for fame, I would not kill thy soul. Talk you of killing. I, I do. Then heaven have mercy on me. Amen with all my heart. If you say so, I hope you will not kill me. <clears throat> and yet I fear you. For you are fatal then when your eyes roll so. Why I should fear, I know not. Since guiltiness, I know not. And yet, I feel I fear. Think on the sins. They are the loves I bear you. Aye, and for that thou diest. That death's <laughs> unnatural that kills for loving. Alas, why gnaw you so your nether lip? <laughs> Some bloody passion shakes your very frame. These are portents. And yes, I hope, I hope they do not point on me. Peace and be still. What is the matter? That handkerchief which I so loved and gave thee, thou gavest cut you. No! By my life and soul, send for the man and ask him. Sweet soul, take heed, take heed of perjury, not on thy deathbed. Aye, but not yet to die. Yes, presently. Therefore confess thee freely of thy sin, for to deny each article with oath cannot remove nor choke the strong conception that I do groan with all thou art to die. Then, Lord, have mercy on me. Say, amen. And have you mercy too? I never did offend you in my life, and never loved Cassio, but with such general warranty of heaven as I might love, I never gave him token. By heaven, I saw my handkerchief in his hand. Oh, perjured woman, thou dost stone my heart. It makes me call what I intend to do a murder which I thought a sacrifice. I saw the handkerchief. He found it then. Send for him hither. Let him confess a truth. He hath confessed. What, my lord? That he hath used thee. How? Unlawfully? Aye. He will not say so. No. His mouth is stopped. Honest Iago hath taken order for it. Oh. My fear interprets. Mm. What? Is he dead? Had all his hairs been lives? My great revenge had stomach for them all. Alas, he is betrayed, and I must die. Oh, <laughs> drop it! Weep so for him to my face! Oh, banish me, my lord! Help! Help not. <laughs> Let me live tonight, kill me tomorrow! Hey, and you stand! There is no pause. I will I say one prayer. <laughs> my lord, my lord. What hope? My lord, my lord. But 
noise is this? Not dead. Not dead. Why dead? I, that am cruel and yet merciful. I would not have thee linger in thy pain. So. So. Look on, my lord. I would speak a word with you. Yes, Emilia. By and by. Like she comes to speak of Cassio's death, the noise was here. Ah, no more moving. Still as a grave. Should she come in? What good? Huh? I think she stirs again. No. What's best to do? If she come in, she'll, she'll speak to my wife. My wife. My wife. What wife? I have no wife. Oh, insupportable. Oh, heavy hour. I think should now be a huge eclipse of sun and moon, and that the affrighted globe should yawn at alteration. I do beseech you that I may speak with you, O oh, good my lord. Uh, I forgot. Uh, oh, come in, Emilia. Soft. By and by, let me the curtains draw. Where art thou? What is the matter with thee now? Oh. My good lord, yonder foul murder's done. What? No? But no, my lord. It's the very error of the moon. She comes more near the earth than she was wanted. It makes men mad. Cassio, my lord, has killed a young Venetian called Rodrigo. Rodrigo killed and Cassio killed. No, Cassio not killed. Not Cassio killed? The murder's out of tune and sweet revenge grows harsh. Lord, what cry was that? That? Uh, what? Out of the last, that was my lady's voice. Help! Help! Alas, who has done this deed? No one. I myself. Commend me to my kind Lord. Why, how should she be murdered? Alas, who knows? You heard her say herself it was not I. She said so. <laughs> I must needs report true. She's like a liar gone to burning hell. It was I that killed her. Wait till she knew the blacker devil. She turned to folly and she was a whore. Thou dost be liar! She was false as water. Thou art rash as fire to say that she was false, so she was heavenly true. Cassio did top her. Ask thy husband else. Oh, I were damned beneath all depth in hell, but that I did proceed upon just grounds at this extremity, thy husband knew it all. My husband. Thy husband. That she was false to wedlock. Aye, with Cassio. Nay, had she been true? Heaven would make me such another world of one entire and perfect chrysolite. I'd not have sold her. My forever. husband. Aye, it was he that told me first. An honest man he is and hates the slime that sticks on filthy deeds. My husband. What needs this iterant woman, I say, thy husband? Oh, Mistress Bill needeth make mocks with love. My husband say that she was false. He, woman. Let's understand the word, my friend, thy husband, honest, honest Diogo. If he say so, may his pernicious soul rot half a grain a day. She was too fond of her most filthy bargain. Ah. Do thy worst. This deed of thine is no more worthy heaven than thou wast worthy her. Peace, thou, thou hast not half the power. 
power to do me harm as I have to be hurt. Oh, the children of the greatest church! I'll make thee known, though I lost twenty lives. Help! Help! Murder! The Moor has killed my mistress! How now, General? What is the matter? Oh, you come, Iago. You have done well that men must lay their murders on your neck. What is the matter? Just prove this villain if thou fearest a man. He said thou told him that his wife was false. I know thou didst not, thou art not such a villain. Speak for my heart is full. I told him what I thought and told no more than what he found himself was apt and true. But did you say that she was false? I did. You told a lie. A damned odious lie upon my soul, a lie, a wicked lie. She false with Cassio, did you say with Cassio? With Cassio, mistress, go to charm your tongue. I will not charm my tongue. I am bound to speak. My mistress here lies murdered on her bed. Oh, and your report has set the murder on. Yes, they are not, masters. It's true indeed. It's a strange truth. It's pitiful. But yet Iago knows that she with Cassio had the act of shame a thousand times committed. Cassio confessed it, and she did gratify his amorous works with that recognizance and pledge of love which I first gave her. I saw it in his hand, the handkerchief, an antique token my father gave my mother. Oh, God, oh, heavenly powers! Sons, hold your peace. Twill out, twill out, I peace. No, I speak as liberal as the North. Let heaven and men and devils let them all, all, all cry shame against me. Be wise and get you home. I I will not. Why, do I blade upon a woman? Oh, thou Dulmore, that handkerchief thou speaks of, he begged me steal it. She gave it, Cassio, no, alas, I took it and I gave it my Filth, husband. Filth, thou liest! Are there no stones in heaven but will serve for the thunder? Make it bitter! Bitter as The woman falls. Sure, he hath killed his wife. I lay me by my mistress's side. The notorious villain. Come, guard the door without him. Let him not pass. But kill him, rather. I'll after that same villain. Tis a damn slave. I'm not valiant, neither. But every puny whipster gets my sword. But why should honor outlive honesty? Let it go. More. More. She was chased. She loved you, cruel more. So said my. Have another weapon in this chamber. It's the sword of Spain, the Icebrook's temper. Ah, here it is. Uncle, I must come forth. If thou attempt it, it will cost thee dear. Thou hast no weapon, and for force must suffer. Look in upon me then, and speak with me. Naked as I am, I will assault thee. What is the matter? Better never did itself sustain upon a soldier's thigh. I have seen the day that with this good sword, this little arm, I've made my way through more impediments than twenty times your stop. Oh, vain boast. Who can control his fate? It is not so now. Be not afraid, though you do see me weapon. Here is my journey's end. Here is my butt and very sea mark of my utmost sail. You go. 
go back this maid. It is a lost fear. Man but a rush against the fellow's breast and he retires. But where should a fellow go? Now, how dost thou look now? Oh, ill starred wench. Pale is thy smock. When we shall meet at Compt, this look of thine will hurl my soul from heaven and fiends will snatch at it. Cold, cold, my girl. Even like thy chastity. Oh, curse is slave. Whip me, you devils, from the possession of this heavenly sight. Blow me about in winds. Roast me in sulfur. Wash me in steep down guns of liquid fire. Oh, does the moon, does the moon. Dead? Dead? Oh. <laughs> Rash and most unfortunate man. That's he that was a fellow. Here I am. Where is that viper? Bring the villain forth. I look down towards his feet. But that's a fable. If that thou beast a devil, I cannot. Nay, hold! It's his sword! I bleed, sir, but not killed. I am not sorry, neither. I'd have thee live, for in my sense, tis happiness to die. Oh, thou, a fellow, that wert once so good, fall in the practice of a damned slave. What shall be said to thee? Why, anything. An honorable murderer, if you will. For not did I in hate, but all in honor. This wretch hath part confessed his villainy did you and he consent in Cassio's death? I... Dear General, I never gave you cause. How came you, Cassio? By that handkerchief, it was my wife's. I found it in my chamber, and he himself confessed it, but even now that there he dropped it for a special purpose which wrought to his desire. I do believe it. And I ask your pardon. Will you, I pray, demand that dimmy devil why he hath thus ensnared my soul and body? Demand me nothing. What you know, you know. From this time forth, I never will speak word. Torments will ope your lips. You must forsake this room and go with us. Your power and your command is taken off. And Cassio rules in Cyprus for this slave. If there be any cunning cruelty that can torment him much and hold him long, it shall be his. You shall close prisoner rest till that the nature of your fault be known to the Venetian state. Come, bring away. So, you, a word or two before you go. I have done the state some service, and they know it. No more of that. I pray you, in your letters, when you shall these 
Unlucky deeds relate. Speak of me as I am. Nothing extenuate. Nor set down aught in malice. Then must you speak of one that loved, not wisely, but too well. Of one not easily jealous, but being wrought, perplexed in the extreme. Of one whose hand, like the base Judean, threw a pearl away, richer than all his tribe. Of one whose subdued eyes, albeit unused to the melting mood, dropped tears as fast as the Arabian trees, their medicine will gum. Set you down this, and say besides that in Aleppo once, where a malignant and a turban Turk beat a Venetian and reduced the state, I took by the throat the circumcised dog and smote him. Hot. Bloody period spoke his mod. I kiss thee, and I kill thee. No way but this. Killing myself to die upon a kill. This did I fear. I thought he had no weapon, for he was great of heart. Oh, Spartan dog, more fell than anguish, hunger on the sea. Look on the tragic loading of this bed. This is thy work. The optic poison's sight, let it be hid. To you, Lord Governor, remains the center of this hellish villain, the time, the place, the torture. Oh, enforce it. Myself will straight aboard, and to the state, this heavy act with heavy heart, relate. 